Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome back to using tile maps as vertex buffers in Game Maker. The previous video I made on the subject went over basic use of how you might convert a tile map to a vertex buffer in Game Maker, excluding some of the fancier features that you might use such as flipping or rotating or transforming tiles, as well as the, uh, the padding between tiles as written to a texture page, and today I'm going to uh, make a bit of a supplemental video on the matter in which I address those things. I did decide that I'm not going to deal with animated tiles. Um, it's not impossible, but it will be taking the long way around a lot of things, and if you need animated tiles in a tile map in Game Maker, just use a tile map. It's going to be so much easier that way. So firstly, I think I'm going to, uh, to first deal with the matter of flipping, mirroring, and rotating tiles. So up at the top of the double for loop where I'm iterating over every single tile in the, uh, in the tile map, um, I'm going to extract three more little bits of information about each tile. One is going to be tile is mirrored, and that's going to be tile map, or uh, rather tile get mirror. Uh, the tile data is going to be tile data. We're also going to say tile is flipped equals tile get flipped tile data and lastly uh, tile is rotated it's going to equal uh, tile get tile get rotate and these are going to be a set of three true or false uh, values which re which represent whether or not the tile is mirrored uh, whether or not the tile is flipped and whether or not the tile is rotated i i can never keep straight whether mirror refers to horizontal and flip refers to vertical or the other way around. I really wish that uh, terminology would say something like tile get mirror horizontal and tile get mirror vertical instead of assuming that I would remember which is mirror and which is flip, but here we are. And uh, rotated is self-explanatory. So if I were to go into, uh, into the room editor, I'm going to, I think, um, Let's put down a few tiles. One of them, uh, I'm going to use these uh, these red and white flower tiles because they're kind of asymmetrical and I should be able to use those to fairly easily uh, tell like how they're behaving. So if I were to, um, I guess flip is vertical. If I were to flip one, actually uh, I'm gonna mirror that one and then I'm going to rotate that one and then I'm going to flip uh, the one that's already been rotated so that it's uh, it's both mirrored and flipped and therefore is upside down the other way. And um, I should be able to look at these, compare them to the uh, the tiles as they come out in the vertex buffer and figure out if it's uh, working correctly. So we've got the red flowers on the left, we've got the red flowers on the right, on the bottom and on the top. Um, let's see, the easiest way to do this I think is uh, going to be to say if tile is flipped. So after we've calculated the uh, the left top, bottom, and right uh, UV coordinates of a tile, uh, but before we figure out like mapping them onto corners, onto vertices, um, if the tile is flipped, we can save our T equals UV top, um, UV top equals UV bottom, UV bottom equals T, so we can just uh, swap the top and the bottom values. Um, we can also do the same with mirrored, except instead of flipping the top and the bottom, we can flip the left and the right, like this. That's pretty easy. If I were to run the game now, and if I were to look at uh, look at the tiles, can I, uh... All right. arrange the window so that I can see both the, uh, the game and the room editor at the same time. So we've got red flowers on the right and on the left, uh, but we haven't rotated them yet. So the, uh, the second two, um, those are currently only uh, flipped and mirrored, uh, no rotation. And if I were to deal with rotation, uh, rotation is going to be a little bit more arithmetic, or not even arithmetic really, but um, we're going to be swapping multiple values because we're, uh, we're rotating the, uh, the corners instead of just changing changing them between each other. So uh, if tile is rotated, uh, let's say if our t is going to be equal to, uh, instead of working directly with uh, left, top, right, and bottom, 
I'm going to be working with um, P1, P1U, P1V, and P2, U2V, and uh, we're going to be uh, essentially shifting them along one. So we can say our T is going to equal to P4U, um, P4U equals P3U, P3U equals P2U, P2U equals P1U, and then P1U is going to equal uh, T, the temporary variable. And we'll do this. Uh, we'll do this also for the, uh, the horizontal coordinate and also the vertical coordinate. Uh, so T equals P4V, P4V equals P3V, P3V, P2V, P2V, P1V, P1V, and the, uh, the temporary variable. And that should account for rotation, unless I have to have them go the other way. I uh, worked this out um, before I sat down to record, and I'm pretty sure that this is the way I want them to go. It looks like it is uh, left, right, bottom, and top. And that is how you would deal with tile mirroring, flipping, flipping, and rotation. All right, that's good fun. Let's see. Uh, there's a, I should probably commit this, shouldn't I? Uh, let me put this on a sep separate branch. Uh, yeah, we can uh, switch branches and bring my changes over. And that's going to be tile flipping, mirroring, and rotating. So there's another uh, small thing that I forgot to mention that I, uh, I should have, and I'm kicking myself for not remembering it. That is that if you have a tile that is, uh, that is empty, so if I were to go to the, uh, to the room editor and let's take the eraser tile and just like, I don't know, erase some, some tiles out in the middle over here. Um, this would kind of work the way I had it before, but instead of showing nothing, um, instead of showing like empty space and you'd be able to see through the tile map, we're instead getting the, like the eraser texture, uh, which isn't really what we want. It would be kind of nice in some ways if Game Maker actually, like, just wrote an empty space onto the uh, the tile map in the uh, like tile index zero, and therefore, if you were to just do do this as I'd written it originally, it would just work, and there would just be no um, no pixels being drawn there. But unfortunately, uh, that is not the way that it works. So I will have to say um, if tile get empty, uh, tile get empty will return true or false if your, if your tile in a certain cell in the tile map does not exist. Uh, and you can check if that is, uh, if that is the case. And if it is, you can just say continue, uh, or you could do it the other way and you could say if not tile is empty, then do all this. But I am a fan of using continue statements, um, instead of, uh, instead of making a big old mess with, uh, with if statements. Um, you are free to do the opposite. Anyway, if we first check if a tile is empty uh, before before we try to put it in the vertex buffer, then we will simply just not insert any vertices into that uh, into that space in the vertex buffer, which is uh, honestly better because we're not sticking triangles there if there's nothing to see anyway, and that'll uh, That'll mean that our vertex buffer is smaller. That'll mean that we don't have to deal with any annoying depth discarding invisible pixel nonsense in 3D with uh, the depth buffer turned on. So that's just something that I, uh, I do need to remember to point out. Should I, uh, should I undo this? All right, let's... Uh, can I not undo that? Thanks, Game Maker. The, uh, the undo stack for the room editor is not that big, apparently. All right. The last thing that I'm going to cover in this video, and this is going to be uh, by far the biggest piece of work, but if you did, in fact, have a um, some padding between tiles, some, some output border X and output border Y, let's go with two just because I think that's the default. Uh, this is going to be similar to the padding around uh, graphics in the, uh, the texture group settings. So this is going to be similar to the border size here, but uh, this is going to be something that we actually have to consciously think a little bit more about. So if I were to clear the cache, and if I were to uh, preview the texture pages now, so again, uh, that's going to take Game Maker a minute to run the ASIC compiler, and when it does, 
um, we're going to be able to look at the texture page. If I were to zoom in here a little bit, we can see that it's been rearranged. And we can also see that uh, between tiles, uh, we have a little bit of a uh, repeated pixels around the uh, the border of each tile. So we've got, uh, there's not really an easy one to see it with here, is there? Uh, most of it's green because uh, most of this tile set is just like a light green grass, but uh, you can see around the edges here, the pixel around the border of each tile has been um, has been extended a little bit. That's to prevent slivers of adjacent tiles from bleeding over onto their neighbors. Uh, which is something that if it was to happen, it would look very, very ugly and it would be something that's a little annoying to deal with. And Game Maker will insert the uh, the border so that if anything bleeds over, it's just the same color as the, uh, the border pixel anyway. It's something that you see more when you do things like uh, stretching or scaling or skewing or rotating a, a texture. Anyway, that's going to complicate the matter of the uh, figuring out the UV coordinates a little bit. If I were to run the game now, you would see that uh, we have a lot of off by something errors in a lot of these tiles. It doesn't really look great. It's not what we expected to see when um, when we put the tiles down in the room editor like this. So we're going to have to uh, figure out how to deal with this. Uh, this is going to be a matter of doing a little bit more arithmetic regarding the, regarding the texture UVs. So let me uh, let me first uh, obtain a few values. Uh, from the tile set. So uh, going along with TS tile width, height, horizontal count, and that sort of thing, I'm going to save our TS separator. Horizontal is going to be TS info dot tile horizontal separator. Our TS separator V is going to be TS info dot tile vertical separator. And uh, these values are going to correspond with the output border X and Y. Uh, in this case, two pixels. Um, I'm also going to want to calculate the texel width and height of that separator. Much like we're doing with the tile width and height in texels, uh, we could say TS texel separator H is going to be TS separator H multiplied by TS texel width and our TS Texel separator V is going to be TS separator V multiplied by TS tex Texel height. Okay, and now we're going to have to, when we calculate our, uh, our left, top, right, and bottom UV coordinates for each tile, uh, we are going to have to uh, add a little bit uh, to these values based on the separator. So, each tile is going to have some border around it, uh, which will have the uh, the width and height of TS Texel separator H and TS Texel separator V in texture space. And that means that uh, there's going to be two parts to this. I'm going to add um, some value onto UV left and UV top. Uh, UV right and UV bottom will be able to stay as they are. We're not going to have to change those. But uh, for UV left, we're also going to want to add um, the, uh, the value of TS Texel separator H multiplied by uh, tile index X plus one. And this isn't all that we're going to need to add, but I will stop to explain it. So if your tile index X is zero, uh, you're going to want to add a, uh, an amount to the UV left, which is the, uh, the separation width, uh, multiplied by one more than the tile index. So that's going to be uh, the separation width times 0 plus 1. If your tile index is 2, uh, you're going to want to add uh, two units of separation on the left, uh, one for the previous tile and one for the uh, the current tile. So that's going to be uh, the separation times 1 plus 1 is, is 2. And uh, we're also going to need to add, I'm going to have to put a, put a plus there, aren't I? Uh, we're also going to need to add, uh, for any previous tiles, uh, TS Texel separation H times tile index X. So this is going to be adding any and all padding on the, uh, the left of tiles up to and including the current tile index. And this is going to be adding the padding on the, uh, the right side of previous tiles, which is not applicable to our current tile index. 
Uh, we don't need to care about that. Hey. And lastly, uh, we're going to need to do something that is similar for UV top, but instead of using the horizontal separation and tile index X, we're going to need to use tile index Y. And that should be all we need to do to compensate for the tile border. I uh, don't believe there's anything else. We can run the game and we no longer have any off by something errors, uh, making our uh, making our tile set look like Glitch City. And uh, everything else is working as it was before. So we've got the tiles being mirrored and flipped. We've got, uh, I don't have any here, but if there were any empty tiles, they would still work. And that is the, uh, the little bit of extra arithmetic you have to do to make the separation between tiles work. So everything else, as I said, tile width height, offset x, offset y, separation x, separation y. Um, these values do not have anything to do with how the texture is written onto the texture page. Um, neither does the texture group or the disable source sprite export. Uh, tile brushes and tile auto tiles are not something that are worked out uh, during runtime. This is uh, something that GameMaker does at, at build time. So you don't have to worry about that when it comes to getting uh, tile texture information on the fly. You don't have to worry about figuring out how to auto tile tiles yourself unless you really want to. Uh, the only outstanding thing is tile animation, which I did I did say that I decided that I wasn't going to do because at that point, if you do need that, just use the draw tile map function. And otherwise, I think that's going to do it. So that is turning tile maps into vertex buffers. Um, working this out from scratch can be a bit of a chore because you have to really sit down and, and work through with pencil and paper where the, uh, where the tile indices and where the UVs belong. But once you, uh, once you've got it worked out, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, this is about, what, 100 lines of GML, 117 lines of GML, so that's not too bad. And we've even got tile flipping and mirroring and all that, uh, to go along with it. I'm gonna end this video here. If you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository in the video description. I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one tutorial tutorial like this, and one let's make a game, currently a 3D uh, Zelda-like wizard game, so if any of that appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. I hope you all found this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Manta Ray, Syndra Larson, Square Crow, Vitro V, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.